Well guys, I think it is time to start putting some of this canning away in the pantry. The question is, is it going to fit? <coughs> canning season is still in full swing here. I am pumping it out still. We have got tomatoes coming out, the wazoo in the garden. As you can see here, my Sam Marzanos are still loaded and I am still really, really, really trying to use them all. All this pile of canning here is right in front of my front door. That was kind of where things got tucked because we really don't use this door very often, but I'd like to have it back. So even though we're still going, I think it's time to see if we can get all this in the pantry. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is show you the pantry. It's sparse, yet not that empty. <laughs> so I think we will have a tough time getting all this in there, but I have a plan. So let me take you down to the deep dark dungeon of a pantry and we'll show you what I think might work. But before we go down there, not only do I have this to put away, but I also have this. So as I've mentioned, the uh, shelves look a little bit bare down here. And uh, I know some people won't think that, but for me, this is getting low. And I am so glad that we are going to be getting everything back in here so I can really get an idea of what I'm actually still short on. Uh, I know there's a few things that um, I certainly still need to stock. I mean, this is something that we do pre even planting season is we sit down and we write out a list of things that we know we need, how much we want to have for the year and basically the goal and how we're going to get to that goal. You know, you're going to see it. You've already seen it in our Every Bit Counts challenge videos where there is repetition. We are making the same things over and over and over because after more than 10 years of preserving food for the family, I know what we eat, I know what we like, and I know what we don't like. And there's no point in wasting time uh, and resources doing uh, or canning things that uh, we really don't eat as a family anymore. So it's narrowed down, streamlined, I guess you could say, after all these years. And uh, you can certainly see the holes right now, but I'm glad I've got stuff to put back in them. I'm not going to go through this whole pantry again. I have a pantry tour video pre Every Bit Counts Challenge, which I will link above here so you can see where the pantry sat at that point. It's even more empty now because we find summer is the time of year that we use the pantry the most because I don't have time to cook meals from scratch. So often we are grabbing something off the shelf behind me here and just kind of bunging that into a pot at nine o'clock at night because that's when we're in and harvest is over. So that's something to keep in mind when you are preserving is it's not just the winter you need to get through. It's also the summer so that you're into the next canning season. Uh, so let's take a quick look at what we've got going on here uh, and then I'm going to see what we can get back on these shelves. So one thing you'll notice here is the shelves that usually house our pressure canning or pressure canned items like soup, stews, that sort of thing are very sparse. So that's something that definitely needed to be worked on this year. And the nice thing is it uses a lot of things that come right from the garden. Uh, also our overstock area, which usually has boxes of all sorts of things that are scattered amongst the shelves is pretty much empty. That's good though, because that's given us some space to move things around right now to make plans. Because one thing that we're noticing this year, uh, and this is why I need to be moving things around, is that our home grown pantry, home preserved pantry is growing. Every year we need a little bit more space for it and a little less space for those items that we get from the grocery store. And this year we've made a big move. Um, we've gotten rid of kind of most of our flower storage and things like that because we don't use very much. I mean, as you can see here, we have two big bags of flour and those are from last year. We're still storing them because we really don't use flour very much at all anymore. So that's something that we're not worried about keeping going with. Uh, but we're going to make use of these spaces that free up to then fill them with the stuff that we can ourselves because it's amazing how much we are preserving so far this year. I, I believe we are at about 450 jars so far and we're still going strong. So I anticipate probably close to 700 jars of food this year that's going to have to go back onto these shelves. But let's get to the fun job of seeing if we can get it all down here. I'm going to reorganize and relabel and I'll bring you back when I'm kind of got it stocked back up and we'll talk a little bit about 
where the gaps still are and what we need to do. But one gap that you kind of saw that was a huge one is right above me, apple juice. As you know, we are hoping to do 104 jars of apple juice, two per week this year. And we already have 44 of those canned, but that takes up a huge space on the shelves. So here's where we're gonna put it now. Everything has been rotated, sorted. Some things have been removed. I've got a couple items that were from 2017, mostly jams, that sort of thing, which I've got in a separate box here like I'm showing you. I'm gonna take them upstairs to the pantry upstairs because they either need to be used or chucked. But uh, everything else that was on the shelves behind me, other than my relish down here, <laughs> Uh, is dated at least 2018 or younger. Uh, the relish is 2016, but to be honest, I just opened a jar from 2013 and it was fine. I'm the only one who eats relish really, so it kind of takes a long time to go through it, but at least I don't have to make it very often, which is good because I am not good at growing cucumbers. But anyways, I am digressing. So uh, on the shelves here, we've got everything organized with uh, the oldest at the front, and the gap set and new labels put on where it needs to go. I did put all the jellies on the top shelf because that's something that we're using a lot less of now. So I don't really plan to make a lot of jams and jellies. So I think it'll all fit on the top shelf, which is fantastic. And then uh, I've organized some of the tomatoes and things like that. But one thing that I did find is another box of this ratatouille that I canned and I canned it three years ago. And it wasn't amazing and it's just kind of stuck around and of course like i always do i go in big and i made a lot of it so anyways i still have a pack of 12 one liter jars plus like eight on the shelf so i'm not sure i'm on the fence i'm going to put that off to the side because it may just become chicken food um won't be wasted but it's taking up valuable real estate and i really don't think it's going to get used even this year if it hasn't been used already but that's where we're at now. I'm going to start bringing the stuff from the kitchen down here and get it on the shelves. This is always so exciting. I have to admit, I have just as much fun emptying jars as I do filling jars though. So once this is all full again, it's gonna be exciting to start eating it. Labeling things is important because sometimes you pop the lid, you put it in the fridge and then you go, what the heck was that? I don't know, and then it gets wasted. So make sure you label. So as you can see, our top shelf is full and done. Uh, that was going to be my jams and jellies. And I added actually something in there and that is our syrups. This year's syrups and sauces are new because we have all this fruit that we produce and we love fruit. And uh, since we don't really have toast anymore for jam, we needed to come up with an alternative for how to use that. So we started with syrups, which are something that we can add to smoothies or into water to flavor it and sauces uh, excellent on ice cream or pancakes or crepes or something like that if we splurge on something like that for breakfast. Uh, so we definitely had a few of those, not as many as I would have liked to make, but I didn't want to overdo it because this is the first year for this. And I thought it's better to run out and know we loved it than to be left with a bunch and not have used it. So we'll see, I do have with the uh, syrups, I have a box of 12 down below that is a mixture of the three different kinds. So definitely we know we loved the raspberry one. So I made a bit of extra of that. And uh, the cherry one we've been having in our herbal teas at night. It's a sweet sauce. So you get that kind of berry flavor as well as the sugary bit. So that really, really is nice with the herbal teas. Um, but anyways, just wanted to touch on that. As you can see, we still have a ways to go. Uh, with filling this, I still have a lot more upstairs, but it is slowly going and we might just have enough space. Well, we finally have everything down here that we've canned so far this year on the pantry. I actually should have tallied up the number of jars that are on these shelves because uh, it's pretty high, but I did tally up the uh, amount that had been canned this season so far, and it was 448 jars. So that is not too shabby. Definitely still some gaps, still some spaces. There's a few things I'd really like to kind of focus on in the next little bit. As you saw earlier, we do make a list at the start of the season of all the things that we know we're going to need to produce for the pantry. And then we kind of plan out our garden accordingly and uh, basically work from there. 
And as you can see with a few of these gaps here, there is some spots I still need to work on, but luckily I still have the tomatoes and things in the garden. Uh, one thing we're definitely still short on in my mind is ketchup. Uh, we probably go through at least two jars of ketchup a month. Uh, so I would really want to have 24 jars and I do not. Um, I would like to have a box of 12 still below to bring up to fill the space as we use them. Uh, another thing that uh, we certainly are short on is our apple juice. We need a lot more apple juice. As I was mentioning, we have 44 jars so far and I'd really like to have two a week. So that's 104. We worked it out. Each shelf here holds 48. So we'd get 96 on these two shelves, which is pretty darn close to what we were hoping for. So that's kind of our goal and anything over and out above that is just kind of icing on the cake. I'm kind of standing in a spot right behind me here because this is a spot that I did want to talk about. Fiesta corn relish, that's something that our corn, we still haven't harvested it. I don't know if we're even going to get corn. Uh, so you can make this with store-bought frozen corn. Uh, so that may be what we resort to. It's a product that I really like to have and I'd like to make a batch or two. So that's still in the agenda. I'm just kind of waiting to see if we actually get any corn this year. Uh, the other thing that I would like to do a bit more of is the curry sauces. I have 12 of the butter chicken. I would like to also have kind of equal of the gel freezy and maybe a little bit more of the butter chicken. I know everybody would like to have that done as a recipe. So that is the plan. And as you've seen in the garden, I have enough tomatoes to make this dream reality. So uh, that's going to be coming up here. The other spot that's really, really shy is still in our pressure canning. Uh, my chicken barley soup, need more of that. Uh, definitely would like to make a few more stews or soups or things like that that we can use. Maybe not lamb stew because that's something we continue to make all year long. It's kind of interesting because when you get going on it, you start to realize a pattern. I mean, we eat a lamb stew every two weeks. We cook a chicken every two weeks, which then means it becomes broth. And, uh, you know, we fill in the gaps with a lot of things. Uh, chili is a big one for us, chili meat. So uh, as you see, that is all stocked up, but we definitely want to... Um, get some more of it going as well. Plus we have more sheep coming uh, to the butcher. So in November, we've got four more being butchered. So freezers need to be emptied. I mean, I haven't even touched on freezers, um, but uh, believe me, they are full. Uh, but anyways, I'm just going to give you a little perusal here uh, of how the shelves are looking, but this pantry stock up so far, mid harvest, really mid preserving season for us is looking fantastic. Uh, preserving season for us really does go well into October. Uh, it's kind of year round because we put so much stuff in the freezer and then we just keep going. Um, but uh, jams, jellies and, and, and that sort of thing are probably done for the year. Uh, unless we end up needing to make any more syrups or sauces, I will take stuff out of the freezer for that. But all in all, I think it's looking pretty stocked. And uh, other than those few little pockets, I'm excited for this upcoming winter season. So I did go for it and I counted every jar that has made it to the pantry, whether it was canned this year or last year or whenever. I counted all of our homegrown food and we have 983 jars down here. And there's still some upstairs that hasn't made it down because we don't have full boxes or things like that. There's some tomato juice and a few little tidbits. Almost a thousand jars of food already put away down here to see us through. And uh, definitely it's a big number, um, but it is surprising how much you need in order to stay out of the grocery store. Um, so definitely, if you like this content, give us a subscribe, thumbs up. Don't forget to follow along with our story here because this is what we do, this is how we live. And uh, as we get going in the winter here, we're gonna show you using all of the stuff that we've preserved and put away because believe me, it will deplete and there's just as much thrill out of emptying a jar as there is in filling it. So hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you on the next one.